Everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. I'm joined by my Bing Bong, Rich Stambolian. Uh, can I be the slam to your Bing Bong? You can be the slam to my Bing Bong. What's up? Are, are you trying to fist bump me or are you yeah, trying to punch your yeah. microphone? Hold on. Let's hold hands. Here we go. <laughs> Eternal friends. Here we can, go. You can't even see it. That's how I take your soul. Huh? Like Andrew Cuomo. Uh -huh. He takes your soul by open mouth kissing you. Uh-huh. And he just sucks your soul into him. I hold hands with you like this, mm -hmm. like a claw. And I just take your soul. I got news for you, buddy. I ain't got no soul. I stole that shit like Millhouse from The Simpsons. <laughs> uh, I may have an update on the potato. The potato man. Do you track down the guy? I believe I saw him yesterday. Is this like your version of Taken? This is my version of Taken. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about it later. Guys, the show's all about professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. And man, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, I seem to be doing this like every other day now. I'm on the air doing a wrestling yeah, show. Yeah, dude. Uh, Matt Man, of course, the flagship here. Uh, we do the Matman podcast every Thursday at 10 30. I'm trying to remember every which day, day we're doing it. Every day. <laughs> every day. Every Thursday at 10 30 mm -hmm. East on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Matman Podcast. Also streaming. Also streaming on F4W video on Twitch. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Also, hey, other shows that I do, a lot of people forget. We're live, pal. I do with Denise Alcedo and go. Garrett Gonzalez over at uh, F4W Online and Wrestling Observer. Also, I'm the host of the Wrestling Observer Live every Sunday at 6 p.m. East. You can tune in live on YouTube, on the F4W YouTube, or, of course, of course, their Twitch channel, and, of course, on Sports Byline Radio Networks. Mm. Uh, where do you want to begin? It was, you know, last night, I, I ended up watching Dynamite after I got home late. uh -huh. And I never do it. I never do that. Who are you asking yourself that question? Yes, I was. <laughs> that was me thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. uh, I I very much enjoy, enjoyed the show, watching uh -huh. that live. Yeah, it was uh, great. How did you feel about it? Dynamite? Mm -hmm. I always watch it live. I make it a point to try to catch Dynamite live because it's like I find it's like the middle of the week. It's a quote unquote hump day. I always hated that term. You hate hump day. Huh? I, hate, I hate that term. Um I always try to catch it live. I make it a point to catch it live. Last night, we had to go to dinner yesterday. It was our uh, eight-year anniversary. So Happy anniversary. Thank I, you. I saw I it. it. I, I got the little alert because Jess quoted mm -hmm. the speech from your wedding on, yeah. on hers. Like She made like the congratulations post, and it oh, popped nice. up on my timeline. That's cool. Right, yeah. I appreciate that. So you know, we went to the city. We uh, had a little dinner, came back. Um, my wife was supposed to do something else. She was supposed to go to David Byrne's show last night, but mm -hmm. it got canceled. So we ended up just coming home, and I was like, I'm nice. just going to watch Dynamite. Even still, ended up watching Dynamite. I make it a weird point. Nice. Not to say that I hate my wife. So I love my wife. But. <laughs> I got home very late last night, so I ended mm -hmm. up, I, I, I couldn't sleep, so I ended up watching it, and I very much enjoyed it. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll go into that as well. Uh, let's begin with the news, so MG Geek doesn't lose his mind mm -hmm. when I don't follow the news. Uh, ratings. A lot of ratings talk this weekend, huh? Uh -huh. People losing their mind. Did you see my timeline? Yeah, you know, like it's very funny when you post this stuff because everybody and their mother thinks they're uh, Dick Eversole. I, I may not do it anymore. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> no, you I, should I'm, do it. I'm, I, I'm contemplating never posting these numbers ever again. You should do it because I want you to be on that perpetual self loathing treadmill of the internet oh my where God. you're just like, why do I do this to myself? And then you'll do it again next week. Well, the problem is my, my, my Twitter's unusable. For the next like three days. Yeah, I know you get so many alerts. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of people fighting over numbers and like, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> Rich and I have a saying about sometimes like you don't know who's behind that that avatar. Ten or ninety, you know, you don't you have no idea if they're ten years old or ninety years old. Well, you were saying this week that you wish everybody on the internet owned up to who they oh, were. I want that. I want. All anonymity gone. So instead of like a guy named like Booby Puncher Six Nine D U D Z, no, he could stay. Man. You want, <laughs> you want like an actual like Ralph Johnson with a picture of his face tweeting you that I, you're a dum dum for posting numbers. Listen, I get I get why anonymity is so important. Sure, but I also it's like half of most of you guys, ninety percent of you guys mm -hmm. would not be saying the crap that you're saying in real yeah. life. Yeah, and. Yeah. Like, it's not to me either. Like, this isn't to me. <laughs> like, I do get some of that. Like, some guys like, mf -er, you posting these numbers because uh, WWE gave get, them to you? Get paid, dude. I'm like, and then, and then this, in the same breath, mm -hmm. 
Another guy's telling me that Tony Khan's cutting my checks. Tony, by the way, still have not gotten that freaking check. I know, man. Isn't like and but I'm like, gonna file a grievance. There's also no uh, fact checking between the people who's who's cursing no. you out and the other people who's cursing you out for a different reason. Yeah, it's just like I think they're mostly bots. I think they're mostly dum dums. Uh, I think people get on their phones and they go, listen, "Ha, it, got him," and that's it. And then you text us and you're like. This is weird. It is weird. It's really weird to me, especially about ratings. Like, I'm not even stating an opinion. Like, you want to mm-hmm. have a debate with me on my opinion, that's fine. You know? Yeah. Like, it, it. that's that's what an opinion is. But I'm just writing a number here with no malice behind it. Mm-hmm. Zero. I'm just posting a number because people are interested. Now, right. I may not do it anymore. I'm at the point, I'm like, you know what? It, it's like, it's a Saturday. Mm-hmm. I post these fast uh, nationals on a Saturday. Every two seconds, it's going off. And it's like an argument between... For, for like days. It's yeah, not even to me. It's like people tagging each other. You can mute it. I could do. You know what I could do? No comments. No comments yeah. or just take it or just take it off all your devices because like, guys, you don't know this. There's like seven screens. Andrew's got his Twitter feed on every single every screen. screen. I, I think, think that's, that's what drives it. you crazy. It's like, it's like lost. You know, it's like you have to punch the number in. Yeah, it's like NCIS seconds. here. It's like NCIS. I have those like, I hyper zoom in. I do analytics mm-hmm. on people. It's nutty, man. Who who the hell cares? It you know, nutty. like it, it's, it's wrestling. <laughs> silly goose. Silly goose. <laughs> is it a guy that you saw? Was, it, is, was he saying silly goose? Or the guy that I saw? The guy that you saw. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Rampage, 431,000 with a .18 in the demo. Smackdown did fantastic. Mm. 2.15 million, 2.15 <laughs> million with a .57. Uh-huh. Yeah. Raw hung on also 1.68 million with a 0.43. We saw Edge return on Raw. Raw yes. was we got to talk about Raw. Yeah, we got to talk about Raw. Okay, I, can, um, I, can I interject? Yeah, go I ahead. also like how you were like, I'm not going to talk about ratings anymore, and then you literally went, No, no, no let's Twitter. talk about on the ratings on Twitter. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Yeah. It's just uh, it's funny to me. I, I dude, I I got I got a little chub for numbers. I know you do, you? man. You're horny for numbers. Bra- Brandon Thurston's uh Twitter account and the Wrestle <laughs> Wrestle uh Wrestle Ticks Twitter account are like my only fans at this point. I know, man. You're I'm just like, like oh, oh yeah, analytics. <laughs> and you know what? If you sign up for the Patreon for Wrestle Ticks, he'll send it to you in an Excel spreadsheet. Oh my god. Which really like I turn off the lights, I put on mood lighting, and I just read those numbers for ticket sales. Do you ever message these guys and be like Hey guys, you hey know guys. what the first four letters of analytics is, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I should actually. You know what, Russell ticks. I'm going to send you that message later. Uh, oh boy. So, I mean, Rampage. We'll, we've we've spoken about that Friday number, the Friday yeah. time slot, uh, endlessly. But, um, you want to go into raw attendance? Let's yeah. go into this okay. attendance. Since September, AEW crowds mm-hmm. have been closing in on WWE shows. Other than the big ones, obviously. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's the the ticket sales are very very interesting because I was talking to somebody yesterday that that has tremendous knowledge on how the ticket industry works, mm-hmm. and they were telling me they're like, you know, it is really interesting that normally when you look at ratings, right? You look at SmackDown, and by the mm-hmm. way, SmackDown's doing fantastic with ticket sales. Yeah, for SmackDown TV, for sure, they're doing great. Uh, you know, they they're generally nearly full. All those shows, the shows have been really good too. Raw's the one that's suffering, but Generally, when you look at ticket sales, a product that's getting 2 million views compared mm-hmm. to 800,000 or 900,000 views, you should see a major, you should see a, a, a indicator as far as why one does better on TV with mm-hmm. their gate. You're not really seeing that with AEW. It, it's pretty equal, those numbers, yeah. uh, which I find that interesting. So obviously, AEW has been growing with their live attendance. It's their first, I guess, real one-year tour which also plays a part in this uh gcw sold out the hammerstein ballroom very cool huh that's pretty fantastic um what a great place to see a show and this is a good sign for gcw because listen there are there are three to five cities in the states that are really hotbed hardcore wrestling towns philly chicago new york and there's got to be two more right uh, Philly, Chicago, Boston, New York. Um, uh, Miami's not that great. Yeah, I guess like uh, Charlotte, you know. But that's being said, Atlanta. it's like a it's an interesting groundswell that GCW is experiencing. Um, and if you guys have never been to Hammerstein Ballroom, it's kind of a treat to go see a wrestling show. Awesome there. venue, man. Yeah, it's it's apart from like seeing something at the Garden, it's a fun. Just, it's unique. Just because of like the historic yeah. aspect of seeing wrestling there. Well, it's an amphitheater, right? Yeah. Better than Terminal 5. Way better than Terminal 5. Terminal 5 sucks. That yeah. was... What club was that? Exit? I think so. 
Was Terminal 5 exit? It was Hungabungas. Hungabungas. <laughs> in Lodi? Hungabunga in Lodi, mm-hmm. New Jersey? Uh, so, let me open these notes again. Sorry, guys. Just lost it. So, GCW sold out the Hammerstein Ballroom, but it sold out way bigger than, like, they're, like, at over 2,000, which is mm-hmm. not, uh, normally, like, Ring of Honor would do, like, 18, 1900. They're they mm-hmm. way packed, as much as they could be in that building. Raw, let's begin with this, took place at the UBS Arena in Long Island, New York. Uh, the first time Raw is there, it's a brand new arena, just opened a couple of weeks ago. Islanders have only played a couple of games there. Mm-hmm. Um, they changed the road signs, too, on the way, uh, on the way there. Did they? they just slapped up UBS like, Arena UBS everywhere. Arena. <laughs> so it's a brand new building. It's like six, seven minutes from us mm-hmm. right now. We could just hop on the cross island. We're there. Super easy. We did not go. To the show. No. Uh, I'm not going to AEW either next week, but scheduling reasons. But this was supposed to be a really big show for them. Yeah. On paper. So I saw the rundown. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I was told last week, I think we broke we broke the story that Edge was returning. Yeah. On the show. I was like, you know what? Edge coming back. I saw that the Miz was coming. Miz and Maurice were going to come back. Yes. Uh, you had a Seth Rollins, Finn Balor match opening the show. That's fun. I, I saw that Vince was going to be on again. Uh-huh. Uh, Russell votes with a great, great uh, tweet of McMahon working out and screaming, I hate Austin the uh-huh. whole time. Fantastic, right? Uh, you had Randy Orton and Riddle with Ziggler and Rude. All right, whatever. Damian <laughs> Priest, of Apollo Crews. You had that Kevin Owens match. That's fun. Uh, with Big E. So it was a, you know, on paper, you're looking at this. You're like, you know what? They could do something really cool with this. But In Long that, Island. That's always the case. Uh, way more this week i felt yeah, i don't yeah, know yeah. did you feel that way about this week i thought you know like whenever they hit the new york market or like that east coast market like you know like the hot wrestling cities they i feel like they try to put on something good but lately i think within the last couple of years it's like one or two things on the show that are pretty great like that edge yeah. promo great yeah very good you know um i think you i remember you were texting us during the opener being like what am i watching right now okay this is where i, where I want to go into. okay 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 I so we're watching that opener. I'm watching Seth Rollins cut that promo, mm-hmm. and and I wrote, and Rich is 100 percent accurate in the chat. I wrote like we have this like production chat. I go, what the f am I watching right now? Like, what mm-hmm. is this promo? What is like, who talks like that? Yeah, it's it's even over the top for wrestling. Yeah, you know, because wrestling is really over the top. Like yeah, Hulk Hogan yeah. cutting a promo. Like this is like a bizarre, like theatrics. Theatrics, yeah, and, and like I'm not, I'm not complaining. I, I'm not, I, I am, a, I am complaining a little bit because yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. separated. It's so, it's so like wow to me now. Yes, I'm telling you, like something happened on that Vegas trip to me. Yeah, I know something happened. <laughs> yeah, you got, you, I think you got poisoned. <laughs> I got poisoned, and now I see things very differently. Mm. Um, dude, it was that guy looking for Joel. That's what it was. That was weird. Where's Joel? <laughs> I know you, you Joel. <laughs> no. <laughs> What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> some dude, real quick. Some dude thought we were Joel. I don't think it was Joel Pearl. No, just was, a random dude in Joel. Vegas. And he followed us to our hotel. And he was like, "I'm not allowed in there." And we were like, "All right." And he was like, "They kicked me out." And we were like, "Okay." And then he started grabbing us and screaming, "What did I do?" Can you please let me in? Can you tell them to let me in? What did I do? And we were like, "Later." And technically, I left. I walked really far ahead with Jonathan, and we let Andrew talk to this guy. <laughs> Dude, I was gonna get Jonathan to fight him. Jonathan's like, "You want me to fight him?" I'm like, "I'm like in like two seconds." I think I think Jonathan would have gotten knocked out by this guy's drunken strength. Oh, you think you think he had like drunken strength? I think so. I think he would have been like. He would have bit him, dude. I he think would've he would have picked him up and just threw him into a wall. <laughs> Jonathan's a big dude, too. He's not like a little yeah. tiny guy. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe that. We're having this Marvel Universe fight with this guy looking for Joel. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, yes. you know, I, I'm watching that and I'm like, everything is so over the top and everything is so mm. theatrical. And again, it's it's Vince McMahon's Muppet Show. Yes. It's a variety yes. hour, and, and I'm not again. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm not well, saying it to disparage the product. Well, the Muppet Show is more entertaining than Monday Night Raw. Uh, the Muppets are fantastic. Way. The Muppets are awesome. It just it it, it mm. is. You know what? I'm gonna say it is soulless. M- Monday was soulless. There's to no me. feeling in it. But yeah. SmackDown, on the other hand, is a whole different show. Like it's so wild to me. A lot of feeling. Tons of feeling. Tons of, of feeling. feeling in everything they do. Uh, so yeah. Very strange. I, I, you know, so they started the show off mm-hmm. with that. Uh, Long Island, not necessarily the best crowd ever, 
but I anticipated that this building would be really hot. It's a new building. People are excited to be there. It's a beautiful building. Uh, and it just, you know, we got that match. It was a very good match. Eight minutes, 41 seconds. Seth Rollins defeated Finn Balor. Then we go into Vince McMahon backstage with Austin Theory. Ah. And all, it, it, like Vince is just grumbling. Ah. Ah. Moaning. I don't ah. want him to expect the unexpected. That's uh, Vince's ASMR. Uh, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Today we're going to be unwrapping Christmas gifts. Um, with my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, you slap the crap out of him at the end of the night. That's kind of okay. funny. Uh, Raw Women's Championship contract signing, because we need more of those. Mm. Randy Orton, Riddle. I'm loving this team. I very much like Riddle and, and, uh, and Orton. <laughs> yeah. It's a bizarro mix match of, you know, a secret stoner and a, and, a, and a very vocal stoner. Yeah. Secret stoner. I like that. Uh, Edge promo. Edge returned. They, mm. they pretty much like, they, they brought up that the MJF CM Punk promo mentioned Miz mm -hmm. and was like, you live rent free in people's heads. Mm -hmm. But it was said like, because you're such a loser. Right, that mm -hmm. was how he was saying. Not that you're like really cool and popular. You live rent free. Right, right, right. It was like you're such a loser. Other companies are talking about you, um, which is which is pretty intelligent. That's like a very intelligent way to do it. And it Edge, is Edge. Such I think intelligent promo. Intelligent promo. Edge gets I think more leeway with his stuff. Like uh, a month ago, I think he mentioned um, FTR. Yeah, was like oh, I got to call like by the real names though. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of interesting, you know, and also like Edge is at, uh, agree or disagree with me, Edge is at the point in his career where if people just hear his music and he comes out for two seconds, that's They're fine. fine. That's yep. okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so to me, this looks like, and I don't know, uh, this looks like it's going to be a Ms. Maurice versus Edge and Lita. <laughs> no, not Lita. Not Lita. Wrong one. Uh, Beth, uh, Beth Phoenix. Phoenix yeah. Really? Yeah. All I, right. That's what I, I mean, that's what it looks like to me. I, I, you know what? That would be fun. Do it I at day one. Do it at day one. One of my favorite WrestleMania matches was John Cena and Nikki Bella. It was a fun match. Yeah. Versus the Miz and Maurice. And he didn't propose to her. Or did he propose? He did. He did. God, was he it, did. Will you marry me? That's like, the like, best proposal of all time. The will you marry me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one's best. Will I was you? there for I was there for the wedding. Were you? Yeah. Wow. My, uh, SummerSlam 91. Very nice. Yeah. My father put me in a tuxedo. <laughs> I thought you were going to say my father put me in a dress. <laughs> my father put me in a dress. I was a flower girl. Uh, all right. That was cool. Uh, Damien Priest. Yeah. Big fan of his, by the way. Oh, he's great. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Damien Priest. Someone told me that he uh, he heard that I said I'm a big fan of his. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it who I think it is? I don't know. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Damien Priest mm -hmm. defeated Apollo Crews mm -hmm. to retain the title. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, ten woman tag match. Now, this was eh. Yeah. Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Nikki Ash, and the 24 7 champion, Dana Brooke, defeated Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, Tag Team Champion, Carmella, and Carmella's mask is so bonkers. Good. So good. Uh, Carmella and Zelina, Tamina, and Dewdrop. And we got Kevin Owens defeating Big E in a non title via DQ 60 minute match. I thought that was a good match. Mm. Listen, story is finishes, man. They can't, they're not doing good finishes. No, they don't, no. they, they want to keep everybody fine. They want to, they don't want to, they don't want to hurt anybody. And they're doing these bizarre finishes on the, on Raw. Raw's a very different product. It is, you know, like what really gets to me about Raw, and this is like nitpicking a little bit, like besides the fact that you were saying it's soulless, um, everybody wrestles the same exact style. There are minor tweaks here and there. But it's pretty much the same thing. It, yeah, and, and uh, you know what's wild? Like I'm watching, I'm watching Seth, Seth and Finn Balor. I'm like, these two are fantastic, great yeah. match. The uh, the the Vince segment. Okay, this is okay. <laughs> like, I feel like it's all everything is almost there. Yeah, everything is almost there. Mm -hmm. Everything is like, uh, you know, getting there, and then it's just missing that that thing to take it to the next level. You know, ten person, ta ten woman tag match. Like, okay, you need to fill up a, you need to fill up 20, 20 minutes yeah, right yeah. here. Uh, Damian Priest, Apollo Crews, that's standard, you know, good match. Mm -hmm. The Edge promo, standard promo, really good promo. Yeah. Like, there's not a lot wrong, but no. yet a lot is wrong. I, like you say, it's missing that little bit of a feeling. Um, I think it's also interesting, like, style-wise, they're doing this to keep these guys more healthy, obviously, you know? And I think there was, like, a Daniel Bryan thing where he said, yeah, I got over in the WWE style because I wrestled like I was a dummy. Is that what he like, said? Something yeah, like that. He said something like that, where he and I was like, "Oh, that kind of makes sense." 
yeah. you know whereas now you see this guy and he's like he's like wrestle wrestling yeah oh uh, he's wrestle wrestling he's wrestle he wrestling, wrestling baby. <laughs> so let's um uh, so a couple things that i that i got from the crowd mm. that that building was really empty okay <laughs> I, so, I do think they piped in a lot of audio. They did pipe in a lot yeah. of audio. I, I mean, it, it, to me, it sounded like it. And I've been I've been one that says they don't pipe in a lot of audio for a mm-hmm. lot of these shows, but it sounded like it. Um, 5,000 something people in that building in UBS, not good. But they have saturated New York. If you're going to come up with excuses, yeah. they were just here for a pay per view oh, at God, Brooklyn. Yeah. They were just here uh, for the Garden Show. They ran Jersey, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Plus AEW ran New York. Plus AEW ran New York. Uh, they're running New York again in December. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, burnout. WWE. So there is a, there is some burnout, but I was very surprised. Mm-hmm. I would have said if this was running at Barclays, it would not have done great. No, because I don't they were think just so. there. Yeah, they did Barclays two nights and they came back and you know, a week later. Yeah. So uh, to me, it was a uh, a little disappointing considering the venue, but mm-hmm. AEW is it's a possibility they may have almost nearly 10,000 people in that building. Yes. Which I'm very curious to see if they, they pull in 10,000 people, which we'll talk about in a little mm-hmm. bit, but you know, a little disappointed with the crowd, a little disappointed with the show, but it was a typical raw. Yes. At the end of the day, uh, NXT, their go home <laughs> show for war games next mm-hmm. Tuesday, ne- uh, this Sunday, this Sunday, this Sunday, ward games. Ward games. Uh, do you want to run down the card? Yeah. Uh, the or NXT, NXT card or NXT. like, all right. So last night we had, um, not, I'm sorry, Tuesday. Kaylee Ray beat Dakota Kai in a ladder match to win the War Games Advantage. Cameron Grimes beat Andre Chase. Cameron Grimes got called out again for the hair versus hair match on Sunday. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Von Wagner. Interesting tag team defeat. You got a day Fantasma. Um, Joe Gacy's all inclusive invitational happened. Yes. Uh, Solo Sokoa defeated Edris and Nofi. I like Solo Sokoa, man. That guy's great. Uh, Andy Hartwell and uh, Persia defeated Ulisa Leon and Valentina Ferras. And Braun Breaker beat Johnny Gargano in a ladder match to win the War Games Advantage. He's a dude I don't want to see on a ladder. No, I don't want to see him on a ladder. Right? Like, what's your ladder limit for physical, for big dudes? Uh, like, you know what? Rob Van Dam was a unknowingly a big dude. Yes. Very he, wide. Very, I, like, his bones are just calcium deposits right like it, he has the thickest bone you know what wolverine body he's got adamant doesn't he skeleton. have that doesn't yes, he have he does. that he, does he, have it, it, he has a wolverine body he's just stocky um i would say i don't want to see a guy like wardlow on a ladder ec3 don't want to see him on a ladder don't want to see him on a ladder um don't want to see braun Strowman or a cane on a ladder when kane climbed uh, a ladder i very upsetting. always get like Oh, watch out! You're very big. His ankles. I worry about his ankles. Yeah, tremendously. exactly, exactly. Because yeah. you never want to see like another Sid Vicious thing happen ever again. Yeah, I, there there has to be a limit. Like I don't like seeing even like a like a Damian Priest. I don't want to see him on a ladder. You know, I don't mind him on a ladder. You don't mind Damian? I feel like on a he's ladder? very like live. For he's, his size. He is very live. Uh, War Games this Sunday. We're gonna get the men's War Game match. Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Pete Dunn, L.A. Knight, and Braun versus Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, Tony mm-hmm. D'Angelo, and Garrison Wall- Whaler. Waller. Waller. Whaler. Whaler. He's a, his gimmick. He's a Whaler. He's a Whaler. Uh, women's match, Raquel Gonzalez, Io Shirai, Cora Jade, and Kaylee Ray versus Toxic Attraction and Dakota Kai. I feel like it's going to be fun. NXT Cruiserweight Championship. You're going to have uh, Roderick Strong. He, where, what are they going to do with him? With Roddy. Versus Joe Gacy. Versus Joe Gacy, yeah. I think he drops this to Joe Gacy. Yeah, I, I think he should. Uh, hair versus hair, Duke Hudson and Cameron Grimes. It looks like Cameron's probably going to lose this. I know. I like Duke Hudson, though. Good and promo on uh, NXT Tag Team Championship, uh, Imperium versus Kyle O'Reilly and Vaughn Wagner. That's going to be fun. Yeah, so uh, two contracts expiring. Though. Oh, really? Yeah, Kyle's contract oh, is ending. Right. And Gargano, took his contract expires on the third, but he took an extension. To okay. get him through to this pay-per-view. He's working like on a handshake deal. He's working on, yeah. So, But they've been trying to get this contract done since September. Yeah, so, I can imagine. Listen, what does he do? I, I don't know. You know, like his his wife's there. Mm. She's pregnant. He has a pretty cushy position there. You know, he's very well liked. How would he do leaving? Does he fit into AEW right now? I don't, I, they're I, all buddy-buddy. 
Huh? They're all buddy. They're all buddy buddy. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. The same thing was the exact same thing that you just said was said about Adam Cole. Adam Cole, I, I feel fit way easier. Super well liked. Yeah. They tried to keep him. They yeah. offered him a ton of money, right? And then we're going to put you on the main roster, X, Y, and Z. And he was like, I'm going to go be with my buddies. Yeah. Is this the situation? We're going to make you be a manager to Keith Lee. Is this the, yeah, right. is this the situation? Because you got to think about like that saturated. It, it's, it's funny because now it's like when somebody leaves WWE, everybody automatically thinks like, dude, he's going to be great in AEW. No. Right? But there's such an influx of talent with AEW that, yeah, listen, maybe that's not the right option. There's also yeah. Impact. There's MLW. There's GCW. You know, yeah. you never know. Maybe this guy's like, yo, I'm going to GCW. I'm, gonna I'm be just going to bleed everywhere. I'm going to be the, another deathmatch king. And then I'm going to bleed everywhere for yeah. the rest of my career. This is how well it worked for uh, Zack Ryder. So, hey, look, yeah. Uh, AEW news. So, we're talking about people leaving and going. Big Swole mm -hmm. leaves AEW. Will not yeah. be, they will not be renewing her contract. Uh, you know, there was a little bit of frustration, I think, on her side. Yeah. That they weren't really utilizing her. I, I always liked, I, I liked her character. I thought she was yeah. a good addition to that to that main roster for mm -hmm. AEW's women's division. Absolutely, uh, but she she also has some health issues. And uh, listen, sometimes you need to step back and be like, let me let me let me leave. Yeah, let me let me regroup, and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do. I think she would do well in NXT. I think she would do well in Impact. Anywhere, anywhere. She's I, great. She's I, great I actually upside. very like. I I love her look. Very likable. Yeah. Like the interesting thing about that is like, so I've been doing this thing. Where like I'll go on a social media my social media platforms. Hold on, this thing. This yeah, I've been yeah. doing that thing a lot. Uh, yeah. Right now, actually, that's why you like the, it's cut off. Like, yeah, right yeah, yeah. You guys don't know what's going on under this desk. Um, I've been doing this thing lately, and it's helped a lot. Where the minute I see like a dumb dumb comment, I'll close the app. That's good. I and like that. I saw the big swole thing, and the first comment was "F Tony Khan." This just shows you how bad he treats, blah, blah, blah. I know. And I was like, Twitter I closed, goodbye. I know. It's bad takes. But yeah, yeah. listen, everybody has, has, a, has, a, has a take now on everything. Yeah. You know. They're usually bad. Somebody was arguing with me on yeah. Twitter about... <laughs> ratings? No, the hospitality industry. Your ratings? My ratings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, a couple of weeks ago, I posted something about, uh -huh. like, hospitality. And mm. it, it was like... They were arguing with me mm -hmm. that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm totally wrong. I don't know. And I'm like, do you work in, in New York and hospitals? They're like, no, but I go out a lot. I'm like, do you even <laughs> live in New York? Thing. They go, no. I'm like, like, uh, I don't want to be like, let me give you my, tell you my credentials yeah. and tell you what I, what I do. And it's just, everybody has an opinion. It is. It's kind of yeah. funny too. Like, I'll, I'll tell you a story later about that. But it's like somebody saying, like, "Oh, are you a fan of uh, eating out? Like, have you been to Smith and Walensky's? No, but I've had Arby's once. I've had, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what it was? Um, it was when I, I was like adamant that we need to reopen New York. Yeah. Oh yeah. This you still like are. Couple, I, which I am. I'm, I still am. Yeah. And somebody wrote, "What? So these waitresses could make a hundred dollars a day?" Oh boy. And I was like, "Do you know how much money?" Like the pen, not every venue is the same. Yeah. Like, listen, you and I have a ton of friends yes. in the bar business, yes. restaurant. Like, I'm not even talking high end places, right? We're talking like dives. Yeah. I could tell you that Rich and I, that we go to this dive essentially regularly. Mm -hmm. If you're not making $600 on your shift right. and you work there, you're having, it's a bad day. You're it's, doing something really bad. Like these, yeah. these guys, like in New York, it's very different. Again, I'm not saying every venue, I'm saying a lot of venues. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting because like I I like I'll give you like a quick story and a half. Like I had a buddy, everybody was an actor, and um, you know what the one thing stopping him from really, really, really pursuing it day in and day out because he makes a lot of the money. The money he was making yeah. bartending. Yeah, this dude would clear. Uh, he worked at like and an old not an old, a mature lady bar, let's say. Oh, not a dirty bar. Like it's just like a mature a a bar where like you know like elegant professional women would frequent Ladies. because it's in like the neighborhood right yeah. he this dude would make between 14 and 18 on a thursday night yeah working like a six hour shift it's fantastic and then do the same thing on friday and he's like yeah i don't i don't know about this man so if it uh, and i'll tell you this if you work at the club mm. uh that i'm very deeply associated with yes and you're a waitress and you're now making two hundred eighty thousand a year you're mm -hmm. a terrible waitress yeah like that uh, that's uh, the god's honest truth yeah so not every venue is created equally. Um, 
Let's go. I, I people love the side talks here about New York City randomly. In yeah, the the, yeah. Of the you show. know what they do. I love. They seeing, do. Actually, I love people. seeing those comments on YouTube saying, yeah. "Man, I, I wish I could chatter. be there. <laughs> I wish I could be there." Uh, AW Dynamite last night. Mm-hmm. Very good show. Well, you're, you're skipping a very important. Oh, 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 there. go ahead, go ahead. You, go ahead. <laughs> Brian Danielson versus Hangman Adam Page set for Winter is coming on December fifteenth, which is next. This next, not next week. The following week. The following week. Yeah, very um, excited. So. A lot of people speculating that is this where you know Bray shows up, Wyndham shows up. You know that's interesting. You know what I think is going to happen with this match? I'm mm. going to call it right now. I think Hangman retains, but he takes the beating of his life from Daniel Bryan. What if what if uh, Wyndham comes and he does his, uh, his voodoo j- voodoo on on uh, Daniel Bryan Daniels? And, like he brainwashes him again, yeah, and he becomes a Wyatt again. Well, technically, technically, he could show up with. All of them. Braun and um, yeah. Eric. I mean, you know what, though? You want to give a gnarly gimmick. Oh, yeah. You want to give him a gnarly gimmick. Winter is coming. Freaking do the, uh, the Game of Thrones the guys. The Game of Thrones guys. They tried to do that with Sting when he when he debuted. Did that? Yeah. It's, oh, yeah, they did do that. But really gnarly. I think it would be really cool. Like me as a fan, you know, really, really cool. You see these three guys show up just like wraiths. Yeah, I mean, like listen, Malachi I'm Black. <laughs> I'm not saying that's happening. I know, I'm just I saying if I find you know that's you get these moments once in a while mm-hmm. that you could kind of align something really cool for them to do. Absolutely. Uh, so winter is coming in Dallas. Very, uh, very exciting. I'm, I'm a little surprised they're doing this match now. Okay. So that means that I'm not going to say what it means. I'm going to skip over that. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Danielson defeated Allen Angels in this match. <laughs> uh, they, he gave a lot. Yeah. He, he sold a ton mm-hmm. in this match, but he looks freaking nuts. I do. I, I like this crazy version of Danielson. I love it too. And I think it's funny how he'll, he, his segments are promo and brutal match. It's very classic. Very. I like that. I like that. He's addressing the crowd. Um, what, next was uh, CM Punk beating Lee Moriarty. Yeah. So CM Punk. Uh, you know, they are really pushing that how tired he looks. Yes. They're very much pushing this. Mm-hmm. Um, I- I'm curious as to why. You know what I mean? I think you got to do something different, right? Because people thought CM Punk, they thought it was going to be what Daniel Bryan's doing, right? Where he's kicking everybody's ass. Yeah. Whereas the story they're telling with Punk is like, he's kind of having fun and he's helping out the new guys, right? And also Lee Moriarty, I wish, nothing against Lee Moriarty, I like the guy a lot, but I wish he sounded like Sean Connery because that's a great name for that accent. It is, yeah. Right? Lee Moriarty. Um, I enjoy it. I think, how do you think this MJF match is going to go? I don't know. Uh, you know, he always does great in these big time matches. Mm-hmm. He, he rarely wrestles. Right. <laughs> which is, which is, you know. That's the key. It, it, and it. At first, I was like, well, maybe there's a reason, but it, it really works in a way that they don't overexpose him, mm-hmm. and because he doesn't wrestle that often, his wins and losses really don't matter as much. His losses right. don't matter as much. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm very curious how this is going to work. I hope they mesh well. I think on promos, they're doing great. Absolutely. It's just now in ring, we're going to see what happens. Uh, great, great promo again, and this is pro- they're going to lead to this soon. So maybe, maybe the um, maybe they do it at uh, winter's coming. No, uh, well, battle of the belts they can't do it. So I, I mean, it's a lot of time to extend this till February, though. Yeah, I think they're going to do it sooner than later. How did you feel about MJF suit? Oh, the uh, Larry David's PJs. So good, great so line, good. great line. Uh, but you know they are going to do Wardlow and CM Punk. Yes. So yeah. that that's. I don't know when that next couple of weeks. My Warlord impression. Do it. That's a good one. I like <laughs> it. Uh, Warlord with Sean Spears defeated AC Adams in a squash. That was fun. Immediately. Now, I, this was the this was the shocker of the night, right? How does mm. Billy Gunn get bigger by the week? How is Billy Gunn? Uh, uh, he has now at fifty eight years old. So this is nearly a sixty year old man. Against a sixty-year-old mm-hmm. Sting, Sting looks fantastic. He's moving great. Billy yeah. Gunn moves fantastic. Uh, this was the first loss for uh, Colton and Billy. Their undefeated streak is over. Uh, I had it on last night. My wife was in the room, and I pointed at Billy Gunn, and I went, "Billy Gunn's almost 60. And she went, 
That's impossible. <laughs> you know what? Same thing with Jess. Jess is like, un- first of all, he's gigantic. Okay, let's six five. He's legit, six, but like six. shoot six five. Yeah, so like wrestling wise, he's seven foot five. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this man is a giant. Uh, he's bigger than ever. He's competing in like a. He, he I think he's competing in like the next couple of weeks mm-hmm. in a fifty over bodybuilding competition. This guy. He's gonna win. <laughs> Listen, coming from a body, I, I, I'm not a bodybuilder whatsoever, as you could tell. Coming but I come from a bodybuilding it. family, and you've read a bunch of magazines about bodybuilding. Tons mm-hmm. of muscle mag. I know. Tons of muscle mag. I still have them. Treehouse Vince sends them over, <laughs> but like only '90s muscle mags. Nothing new. Nothing. New. He doesn't like the new generation. He wants them just really roided up. Um, dude, like this guy is unbelievable to look at. Yeah, he's a statue. He's he really. Is they a, should call him the immortal Billy Gunn. The one. Billy Gunn. The one really good. Uh, I love Sting's makeup. Sting and Darby doing like the Samesies makeup. Yeah, that was cool. Really did it for me. Samesies. The Samesies. And I also like how they're kind of doing the smoking gun stuff when they, on the intro. Are they? They're what? doing like, like, uh, who is? the One of the sons is doing like bang bang stuff and then crotch chops. With <laughs> is the he pistols. really? Yeah, it's great. Oh, man. It's so great. But I mean, Colton Gunn is such a great cowboy name, mm-hmm. is it not? And Austin Gunn. And Austin Gunn. Great. I think those are their shoot names. Yeah, it is yeah. Austin. No, but Gunn's not the the shoot. No, no, name. it's Sop. But Austin, it's, I think their yeah. first names. Yeah. But Austin Gunn and Colton Gunn, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So good. I like them. I don't know why. I'm into the ass boys. I think it's be- just because they're they they do share a little bit of their dad's charm. And also the thing I always think about when I watch Billy Gunn wrestle, I could talk about Billy Gunn for three hours, by the way, guys. The thing that I love about watching Billy Gunn wrestle is that he's, he's always sold so tremendously. And there was an old interview with Very him. Very good, yeah. There's an old interview with him and Road Dog, I think, where he was like, you know, and there was a point when you'd go to Madison Square Garden or like Nassau Coliseum or Chicago or whatever, all the banners for wrestling were The Rock and Austin of course, yeah. But who's on the receiving end of their finishers? It's always it's yeah. always them. Yeah, you know they were paid to make these guys look like a million bucks, and they did. They and they were fantastic. Made Sting look like a million dollars yesterday. Yeah, um, you know, and and here's the thing, right? Like when mm-hmm. you have the argument of the older guys, when yeah. you have the older guys not in a key like prime position to yeah. win a title. Or you put it like it doesn't bother me. Like I think mm. it's perfectly fine. Like in WWE, does it? I'm gonna tell you that Goldberg Lashley match. That's fun. Was a lot of fun. And yeah. and I, I I tell people all the time, remove that stigma of what you think of Bill Goldberg and watch that match. They right. told a fantastic story. They did. Uh, and and I feel like this is cool. You're gonna get you know you're getting to see Sting in a tag match with Billy Gunn. All right, you know what? It it it, it pops a certain generation of fan. This guy. <laughs> Me, yeah, I like it. Yeah. I'm into all of them. Absolutely, Gonzo was. Oh my God, Gonzo was doing a little bit of that uh, that auto e yesterday while he was watching it. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, next, he had Chris Jericho interviewed backstage. He gets beat up by 2.0. That's fun. I, you know what? It's funny. This is like a weird thing. It's not a knock on anything. Why is everybody dressed like Britt Baker? Everybody is dressed like Britt Baker. Black leather jacket, black t shirt, black tight pants, Nikes. Yeah. Um, and you had the. Uh, t- That's how I dress. Yeah, that's how everybody does yeah. it. Tight, tight jeans. Tight. Your jeans Jordans. are tight. My jeans are tight. Your jeans are I'm gonna very tell you, tight. My jeans are super tight because you know why? I get them with the stretch in them. I know. That's the trick. And I'm going to tell you, it feels like a million. These pants, mm-hmm. feel my pants. Pull my pants right I now. I pulled your pants. Pull my times. pants right now. Pull these pants. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Pull these pants. Oh, those are stretchy. These, these are, are stretchy. Very, stretchy. very comfortable. They're they seem pants. like they're very comfortable. Super comfortable. Yeah. I wear these on the on when I fly all the time. When I'm like flying, Superman. like Superman, I <laughs> these pants. Uh, you have the TBS Championship Tournament. Ruby Soho beat Chris Statlander. That was a fun match. Um, I like how Chris Statlander's an alien, but she's like a wacky alien. She's not like a terrifying alien. Boop. Yeah. Uh, Bing and then, bong. And then your main event. Right off the bat, it felt it had that big fight feel. It felt like it was going to yeah. be something special. Listen, you can boo Cody all you want, but the dude goes friggin' Hard. He does go hard. He man. goes hard, man. Uh, and I thought him getting busted open was going to be the end of it. That chair spot. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's go into this. Match, yeah, please. Right? Uh, Andrade came out dressed mm-hmm. like he's doing a shift at my job. Uh, I mm-hmm. like that his street fight clothes were dress <laughs> pants and a button down. Why not? Why it not? Works. Good for him. In like dress shoes. That's like what you're wearing. That like, is if what you I'm got wearing. into a fight right now, this that you have to, you can't change out of it. No. But I'd be way more comfortable. These pants are very stretchy. Exactly. Uh, Cody comes out with his with his ridiculous entrance. The Homelander Ar- entrance. The Homelander entrance. Mm-hmm. And 
Arn Anderson falls into where the fire shoots out uh, on that side. First of all, he, and you know he's not the only one that fell yeah. because CM Punk almost fell in that thing also when yeah. he was walking up the ramp and he caught himself. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe maybe they shouldn't have had that thing there. But Arn falls, total brawl. Cody takes off his jacket. And I think I, me- I sent the group message. Mm. I was like, what the hell happened to his back? What's on his back? I thought it was a sunburn. I thought so too, but he was so pale. And then I was like, candle wax? I don't know. I'm making a joke. Like, this is candle wax. What's happening? It told the, it didn't tell a story, but I feel like it didn't go as they planned, but who cares? It's, it's, it's like fire retardant. Yeah. Right. That's what it was. It's like yeah. a spray on. Um, so pretty much he was wearing fake skin. You had T pain ringside. So good. Cody's bleeding everywhere. Mm-hmm. At the end, Brandy comes out. They set up a table. They light that freaking thing on fire. Yeah. Cody does what what did he hit him with? He wanted to hit him with a like, suplex. A, like a reverse suplex, and Andrade turned it into like sliced bread number two or something. But some who shit. ate it? Cody it, ate it. Cody ate it, but it wasn't supposed to look like that. No, no, it was supposed to look like that. That Cody ate it? Right, because at in that it was very But Cody then immediately went for the pin. I think on TV it looked weird. Because you see, there's Cody's about to do it. There's a struggle. Andrade cinches him on the neck. Cody eats the table, but it hurt Andrade, and Cody gets the pin while they were both on fire, which was pretty rad. Yeah. So Cody mm-hmm. was on. Yeah. Cody's arm and his pants and were and Andrade's chest and Andrade's chest. Yeah. Were on fire during the pin. I don't think they took into account the plastic on the table that was going to catch fire. Uh, that's that what it was. Yeah. Also, I'm going to interject here. Yeah. There was a move. This this is a testament to how good Andrade is. Cody did the moonsault off the barricade. Yeah. Right? This dude would have, if you watch it back, he would have busted his seat. Oh, there they are. Oh, let me hold on. Let me yeah, see yeah. this. Hold so on. We're going so, back. The, uh, the replay of Dynamite is on the air right now. Yeah. And, uh, I, I want to see this. As and, I mentioned the before, boys are out. they're doing the gun, smoking oh. gun. They're combining all the shit that Billy Gunn used to do. Kissing. Oh, yeah, he is doing shooting. it. He's doing the six shooter. Boom, boom. And the suck it. Yeah. I love that. Which I, one is the better one? Is it Colton or is it Austin? That guy. They both look just like him, too. Yeah. Really nuts. How, Jesus well, Colton, uh, Austin's Christ. shorter. Yeah. But I, I mean, how short is he? Because <laughs> I don't even know how tall they are because he's like a tree that grew from the earth. They're, this guy. They're probably Billy. like six feet tall. Anyway, so Cody did this moonsault off the barricade, right? How'd he keep his name? That's a good question, you know? It may have expired. I don't know. I, I wonder if that was, like a, that was like a deal. They gave him his name. I, I, could, does someone know the answer to this? That's very interesting. Because he couldn't do it in TNA. Yeah, he was, uh, what was he? He was uh, Kip. Kip James. Yeah. The James boy. Which was fun. Anyway, James 1 and James 2. Cody went for this moonsault off the barricade, right? Yeah. If Andrade, Andrade caught him so perfectly... As for not for Cody not to bust his neck, yeah, testament to Andrade's skill and awareness when he's wrestling. Yeah, he's he's so good. Did you enjoy the match? What a handsome boy he is too. I I, I loved it. I thought it was a really good match. Mm-hmm. I you know Cody Cody continues to get booed, which is fantastic. He was in Atlanta. He got the win, hometown win. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll see what happens next week in Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. AW Rampage. So the mm-hmm. the main match for this got screwed up. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, here's the problem. What happened? <sighs> okay. I, I got I got an alert saying that the match is off. The two out of three pinfalls match is off mm-hmm. because uh, there was travel issues. Okay. For Penta and uh, Phoenix. And Phoenix. It was actually it was Phoenix that had the travel issues. A lot of mm-hmm. people saying that he's hurt. He's not hurt, yeah. and he's on that Triple Mania card. Both of them are actually. They're going to be uh, facing FTR and Triple Mania. Great. So uh, I think it was just a flight issue, and he couldn't get he couldn't get on the show. So they'll they'll be doing it in a couple of weeks. So good. Oh, is that uh, the Sting's make- boy? The makeup. The makeup. Yeah, that was good makeup. Uh, let's see what else we got here. AW Dynamite lineup for next week. Uh-huh. We got Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal. Fun. We got Danielson and John Silver, Long Island native John Silver. And Great. we got Rio and Jamie Hayter Great. so far on the card. Uh, and AW Dynamite Winter is coming on 12-15. The lineup so far, the match that we have is the world title match. 
AEW World Champion Hangman Page faces off Brian Danielson. Great. Very, very cool show. Guys, submit your questions in the chat. We're going to do a quick 10-minute Q&A to get through some of these questions. And uh, we'll go from there. Do we have any questions lined up? Are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Boom. Look at that. This is from Joe Cabana on Twitch. What does Andrew predict for AEW's next TV deal? How much bigger could we be looking at? Uh, that's a great question. I think the he, it's gonna it's really going to matter on 2022. Mm-hmm. And if there's no interruptions. I think if there are no interruptions, they're going to have a nice, you know, by, by, by September comes next year. They're going to be sitting, yeah. if, if all things point the way that they're, they they should, they're going to be sitting at the million mark a week. Oh, for sure. You know, right now they've had too much, too much, th- that Saturday move, the Friday move, the, uh, you know, the, the day, the time, like all this stuff has mm. happened where it really, stop, stop and start never helps anybody. Going to TBS, being situated there where you know you're not going to be moved on your Wednesday for hockey mm-hmm. to a Saturday uh it's gonna it's gonna help them way more for sure so we'll see uh i i I think if they do well you know the numbers are over a million they're gonna get a lot more money for tv but then the expectations are much higher so you know but they do over deliver yeah are you ready for the next one yes this is from prateek in the chat room hey andrew Mm mm-hmm who is the next big superstar in nxt that could change the landscape of WWE. Uh, I, the next big guy is going to be Braun ba- Breaker. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, that's the dude. Okay. Who else Who else comes comes to mind for you? That could be a big star. From NXT? Yeah. I don't know. You know, it's different. I, like, I'm not in the writer's room. I, I think feel Austin like with, Theory, too. I feel like with WWE, because, like, you know, you the days of getting a guy over naturally, organically, are over. Yeah. So, Austin Theory... Ron Breaker, you ha- I feel like you have to look at like the the big boys. Yeah. You know? Uh, you ready for the next one? Uh-huh. This is from the Champ 2011 on Twitch. If Roman is injured or not available, who do you think will be their number one draw? Uh it has to be Drew, right? On SmackDown? Drew or on the SmackDown. whole company. Or the whole company. Whole company. It'll probably be Drew, or they would they would revert back to Brock. Mm-hmm. Drew, Brock, um. Oh, let's see who else. Maybe Seth put the title on. Edge, mm-hmm. you could put the title on. You know, I'm very surprised they're not doing... I think they need to do that story about Edge winning the title again. Yes. And, sure, and sure. I think that's a really good story for 2022. You could tell that story mm-hmm. very easily, and people would very much enjoy it. Um, I think if Roman's out, you're going to have to default to a couple of those guys. You're going to have to go to Drew. Yeah. Uh, you could do something with Brock again. You could do... I'm I'm just thinking Drew more than anything else or Edge. Sure. You know? I'll agree with that. All right. This one's off of Twitter from jblun 23 You guys are awesome. Love the show. Who is the favorite to win the Diamond Ring this year at AEW? MJF's in it, isn't he? Do you think he retains? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that could be his thing where nobody beats him in this, in this Diamond Ring match. Do you think AEW needs, like, another hot heel? On his level? Yeah. Um... You have Danny Bryan. Mm-hmm. You got the Bucks and Kenny. Mm-hmm. You have MJF. Yeah. Adam Cole. Adam Cole. And then you have, like, I guess Miro. Miro's a good heel. Britt yeah. Baker. I th- Well, Britt's, Britt's like a baby face now. Yeah. Nobody boos her. FDR. Um, well, the I, pinnacle. I mean, all of MJF. Yeah, I, th- guys, I think yeah. They're, they're well balanced with okay. that. I think they need stronger baby faces okay. more than anything else. Fair enough. Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy in a couple of years. Yeah, he'll be a big time. Well, Jungle Boy wins star. the ring. Oh, you want, okay. You know what? You could do that. You yeah. could have Jungle Boy win. That it. makes sense. Uh, let's see. This is from uh, Yash Vardan on Twitter. What are your top three picks to win for the Men's Royal Rumble 2022? Oh, that's a great question. I don't even. I haven't even thought about this. Do you want to take this? Edge, again, again. Uh huh. Bobby Lashley. Ooh, maybe Lashley. I would say one of the Usos, but I'll go Who's either. Who's almost there? A Seth, maybe? Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens could win it. Finn? A Finn. Oh, you know what? Finn would be great. Finn would be fantastic. Yeah. Finn would be fantastic. Uh, Brock wins. Oh, my God. 
that Matt Riddle, Riddle, that's a, that's Matt Riddle could yes. win. You know, that might be cool. Riddle and Brock. Block. Block, block Lesnar. <laughs> Riddle and Brock are definite possibilities. Uh, this is from Vibor. Do you think, Vibor. Do you think Walter could win next year's Royal Rumble? No. No? No. I don't. Let's see. Because Walter does not want to wrestle here full time. All right. We got a super chat from yeah. Brandon Edwards. Thanks, bah, Brandon. Bah, bah. As always, 20 bucks. Boom. If O'Reilly leaves NXT, is it taboo for AEW to reform Undisputed? Also, if Roddy drops the title, is he gone too? I don't think he's necessarily gone. I don't think it's taboo either. I think that's fun, mm-hmm. man. I think it is fun. It popped the crowd. It's. I think it's a good faction, right? Like, why not? You don't. You can't have Adam Cole with the Bucks forever. No, but you could have them all together. You can have them all like. And, a, then, and then when Kenny comes back, he's like, "What the f's going on here?" So would you call them the undisputed elite? Yes, if you could. But well, where's where's Gallows and Anderson? What happened to these guys? Uh, they're not. They're in TNA. They're an Impact, right? But they just stop showing up. On dynamite, you think that's? Uh, I don't think it's cut. I think done? for now, I think for now they cooled off on it. Okay, yeah. Uh, this next one is from OK Johnny on YouTube. Who should actually beat Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship? I'm thinking Adam Cole or MJF. I, I think those are really good picks. Those are really good picks. I kind of want. I want to see Darby hold it again. Uh, honestly, like I feel like Billy Gunn would be a good interim champion. Billy Gunn. Great interim. You're, you're really one you, week. You got a boner for Billy. I today. love Billy Gunn, dude. I've always loved Billy Gunn. Um, one week, Billy Gunn has that title and drops it to one of his kids. Would be great. Uh, I think Jungle Boy would be a fantastic TNT. You know who I TNT want to win the title? Who? Vibor. Yeah, I want Vibor to win the TNT sure. title. Uh, this one's from uh, Pratik. Hey, Andrew and Rich is Austin Theory the next main event big superstar on Raw? They're trying to. They People are really very, you know, want that. even even bef- when he was a big Paul, Paul Heyman, we saw yeah. him. Didn't we see him wrestle a couple times at uh, at Evolve? He yes. was an Evolve guy. Yeah. Uh, he was very impressive in Evolve. Mm-hmm. Great body, great look, uh, really solid worker. Uh, I think he he definitely they see that potential. Yeah, you know he's adapting. You know what someone said to me? They said he's adapting very well. I could see that. So, as opposed to like his first like weird mini run, yeah, I can't believe you want to see Billy Gunn as CNT champion for a week, for one week, for one week. Okay, I think that'd be awesome. All right, uh, and then he gives it to his kid. Okay, one just hands kid. it to him. Yeah, and then what does the other kid do? Gets upset. Yeah. How about me, Dad? I think it's a fun. Th- and, or you know what? I feel like all this stuff is kind of leading up to that trios, that trios title, right? It is leading up to the trios title. There'd be a good trio. Death Triangle is a good trio. Um, Jurassic the Express Bucks. is a good trio. The Bucks with Adam Cole is a good trio. Like, there's tons of trios out yeah. there. All right. This next one is from, who did I put? Mark M? Mark H. Mark H. With Texas getting winters coming, do you think the show in Greensboro, North Carolina will be Christmas themed like Holiday Bash? Uh, Maybe. Hmm. I mean, I, it, it's a day. It's, what is it? It's on Christmas Eve? No. When, what Winter is, is coming? On? No, no, no. Uh, when is, when is Christmas fall? This, this is on a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Okay, yeah. got it. So got that it. Wednesday, you think like the they could do a Christmas twenty like third or the twenty yeah, yeah. twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty second. They could do that. Okay, you ready for the next one? Yeah. Uh, that wrestling podcast is War Games Gargano's last night in NXT. So they are. Uh, the word is that they're still working on a deal. Mm-hmm. The last update I had was they are still working on the deal. Um, listen, mm-hmm. this is very similar to the Adam Cole situation, right? Contract is ending. Mm-hmm. He's holding out. Obviously, smart move because they know that they want him. You also don't want to, you know, say you want to leave. Mm-hmm. You want to see what the best possible opportunity is for you. And I think he's playing his cards perfectly right. Yeah. You know, right now, um, let me see if I got the story here. I do not have the story here. Changed my mind. I thought I had something pulled up. Changed your mind? Yeah, I thought I had something pulled up. I can't pull it up. Um, I... You know, I don't know where he will benefit, you know, mm-hmm. if he goes to AEW or stays there. I, you know, I, they definitely need him. And by the way, NXT is not doing bad in the ratings. Yeah. I want I, 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 people really need to realize that these ratings really are not major indicators of, a, of, of quality mm-hmm. as far as people think. Because a year ago, even when they moved to Tuesdays, mm-hmm. Before you know, before the uh, the new NXT, the numbers were sitting exactly where they were. They're, I mean, they're off by about one hundred and twenty thousand now, but they're not. 
you're not seeing this mass hemorrhage of viewers. It's still in the sixth range, the mid sixes. And USA is very happy about this because they're not paying much for the show. Right, right, right. You know, and this is, the, and by the way, I, I, you know, this comes from uh, people I speak to at MB, at uh, USA. And this comes from, you know, people I've spoken to at WWE where they're not as concerned about the rating because it didn't fall off the cliff as people, some people predicted. Yeah. And to put it on a Tuesday on USA and it becomes, you know, a major show for them on a Tuesday because they really don't have too many flagships on USA anymore. Right. They, <laughs> they haven't done a good job at building their, their suits replacement. Suits and Monk are gone. And Monk are gone. Uh, it's filled with SVU reruns. So, <laughs> uh, and, and, and Crisley, but mm-hmm. hey, hey, it's Crisley. Uh, I would say it's doing, it's overperforming in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the move to Tuesday is the good slow burn because at that point when they do tip, and when they do tip the scales to becoming like a big money show, it's got a built in audience. Already, yeah. You know, uh, this is from Large 23. Did Tiffany Stratton get canceled on NXT? They still showed the vignette for her on Wednesday's show. I don't know. What's I don't know what the story with that is. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Maybe too many cooks in the kitchen on that yeah. one. Uh, this is another one from Pratik. When is Braun Strowman coming back to pro wrestling? He spelled it Barn, which I think is pretty funny. Though. I do like Barn <laughs> Strowman. Uh, That's what they're gonna call him on yeah, the Indies. Yeah, Barn Barn Born Strowman. He could be. He could do like a uh, like a like a Born mm-hmm. B like a like with the things on the on the O the dots. The umlauts? The, yeah. You know what would be great? If he showed up as like just his gimmick from when he was on the uh, the ag- the um, Adam Rose. <laughs> the bunny? The, no. He could be the bunny? He could be the bunny. Yeah. But I think he was the he I don't know. He, he's, he's acting now. I think, a lot of, I think a lot of people are taking a stance and they're trying different things right now. Mm. Uh, let's see. It's 10. Th- it's 1130. All right. We got to get out of here. Do you yeah. want to do one more? Let's do one more. Give us a juicy one, guys. Yeah, big was, juicy one. It was like a juicy question. Uh, there we go. This is from uh, David Claire Bennett. I've been wanting to ask this all week long. Where is Elias? He's dead. Isn't he dead? Elias is dead. Did Elias get murdered? Whole new, whole new character getting repackaged. All right. What do you think they, he sh- they should repackage Elias as? As like like a real journeyman wrestler. <laughs> You're gonna say like a real jerk. <laughs> like a real jerk. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. He's another interesting character where like he's gigantic. He's, he's a big huge. dude. He's big, huge. big dude. Yeah, very big dude. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, I'm gonna go to work, and Rich is going to Manhattan. Yes. What are you doing? You're, you're I gotta go to work. I you're midtown. Yeah, yeah. How long are you work until? All day. I gotta do a thing, and then I gotta do another thing later. In the city. In the city. Uh, second thing's in Greenpoint. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I was going to say, if you want to meet me for a drink. Oh, I'm driving in. All right. so. I'm also oh, yeah, being a good boy. So. Oh, no drinking for no you. Drinking. Good boy. Yeah. All right. Guys, that's it for, the, that's it for this week. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday with Wrestling Observer Live on F4W. Yes, uh, Rich, what do you have coming up? Uh, I mean, you can check me out on uh, Twitter on BTC Rich. I got my Film Zeros pod. You can check us out uh, at Film Zeros on Twitter. We, uh, it's Film Class Zeros with me and my buddy Alex Calgianis. Uh, we talk about movies every couple of weeks on the, the nice internet. German last name. Very German last name. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's about it. I mean, you know, it's Christmas time and like we just had Thanksgiving. So how was your Thanksgiving? Busy. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I'm tired. I, I, I haven't recovered from it yet. I haven't recovered. All right, guys, that's it for this week. See you later. Later.